morning and thanks for being with us on this Friday, June 28th. We're going to have more on all of our top stories in just a bit. Rapper Cardi B back in court today. She is facing assault charges. Sometimes all it seems to take is a minor train issue here to cause mass chaos at Penn Station. He said this is criminal, dangerous, abhorrent behavior, and we're working with the NYPD to ensure whoever did this. My last name is Ferry, maybe. Yeah. Does this entitle me to like line cutting or something like that? Are there any perks involved? <laughs> Oh, just call me Midge. Is this a win for the Trump administration? Because it kind of acknowledges the fact that this could be a question or is it a win for the other side? And following the trial for weeks, she's live in Kew Gardens with our top story tonight. Cheryl, I mean, who could imagine that this would happen tonight, right? We had closing arguments early this morning. The jury has been here since around nine o'clock. The rotary phones that are here, newspaper stands and even this arrivals and departures board. You need to. To, to really drink it all. I'm gonna go back to work <laughs> after this. <laughs> so I am down here with all of these revelers. How are we feeling, guys, tonight? Yeah! The residual delays on BDQ and N trains still happening due to those trains brakes being activated. Paroma, the message here has been justice for Junior, and that has not changed one bit on this first day of trial. Filings for unemployment benefits unexpectedly rose last week. City and State Magazine named Shannon Ferry one of the top 10 Queens people on the rise. You know, there has been this talk that he is concerned about coming out as a political spectacle, but naturally, in its essence, this is a political spectacle. Right. I, I think what you hit the nail on the head, though. Your phone rings, you pick it up, you wonder who it is. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's work. But no, it is indeed a scammer. The NYPD is working with the MTA to track down whoever's been pulling emergency brakes. So they're hoping once all of this is done, it's really going to alleviate the delays in this area. Governor, are you excited? We're live on New York One. How do you feel? I am. I am relieved. It's a new study suggests a lot of cyclists in Manhattan are not stopping at red lights. Kept incredible composure. She was up there on the stand for 30, 40 minutes as she was testifying. Of course, it's significant because in the original trial, she did not testify at all. It happened near the 23rd Street stop along the F line just around 930, a very busy time of the morning. They pour into the Cross Island Parkway as well. Whitestone Bridge, a much better option if you're looking for that. We see e-bikes pretty often, right? In fact, the Council members here, you mentioned they estimate about 50,000 of them are already in the city. New York is the best city apparently to celebrate Easter Sunday. And as you're walking through the haunted house, there are students watching you, following your every move through surveillance video. Meteorologist Sally M. Mosey joining us now with a closer look at the forecast. Okay, so I checked out your checklist. Oh, good sunglasses. That's your New York One Rail and Road Report. I'm Shannon Ferry. I'll be back here in about 30 minutes with more traffic. We will stop Amazon with everything we've got. Go back to Seattle. That's the message these elected officials and residents have for Amazon. A day after the announcement, the company promised to build a giant new office and employ at least 25,000 workers in Long Island City. Let's not kid ourselves. Amazon is not trustworthy. Two local officials, City Councilman Jimmy Van Bramer and State Senator Michael Giannaris, staged the rally at 44th Drive and Vernon Boulevard, across the street from Amazon's future home. They joined other politicians, leaders of some unions, and residents in criticizing Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo for negotiating the plan in private without community or council input. Perhaps their biggest gripe, though? New York's promise of more than one and a half billion dollars in tax credits and other incentives to one of the richest companies in the world. With a mass transit crisis, with a public housing crisis, with a million different things that we could have used this money for, the governor and the mayor conspired secretly to cut a deal. The governor and mayor say the investment will end up bringing billions of dollars in revenue to the city and state, along with all those full-time jobs. But protesters said they fear it will also result in skyrocketing rents, forcing longtime residents out. They say they should have been consulted during the 14 months the mayor and governor wooed the retail giant, which weighed competing offers from more than 200 cities. Think about how crazy this is. A private company 
force the government to sign a secrecy agreement and not tell its own people what it was doing with its money. So what comes next? Well, elected officials say they plan to continue protesting this deal and they won't hesitate to take legal action if necessary. But it's not clear if they have the power to stop the development. The deal was structured so that it does not need city council approval. In Long Island City, Shannon Ferry, New York One. <laughs> Anastasia Somoza is used to making waves. She made national news when she was nine. So you just want your sister to have a chance? Yes. Asking President Bill Clinton why her twin sister Alba, who has a more severe form of cerebral palsy than she has, wasn't allowed to be in a mainstream classroom. I have to look at my calendar. This is Somoza now, as the city council's first liaison to the disability community, appointed by Speaker Corey Johnson. Even though we're the largest minority, we're also still the most unseen and unheard. She already has begun staking out priorities. Thank you. For one, making the subways more accessible. Less than a quarter of the stations have elevators. My needs aren't special, my needs are human needs, just like yours. Samosa was born in Manhattan with spastic quadriplegia, a form of cerebral palsy limiting use of her limbs. Her activism comes naturally. She and her parents are used to fighting for equal treatment. I see my role as being the connector between disabled New Yorkers and the work that we do here. Samosa graduated from Georgetown University. Her work with the Clinton Global Initiative led to a role at the last Democratic National Convention where she criticized Donald Trump's treatment of a disabled reporter. Donald Trump doesn't see me. He doesn't hear me. Samosa says she jumped at the chance to work on local issues in City Hall. After all, New York is her home. You think maybe we'll see you as a member of the city council here one day? Maybe one day. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. One thing Samosa knows, she wants others to follow in her path. I am the first, but I by no means should be the last. She draws inspiration from this sticker on her desk. Disability rights are civil rights, it says. I look at it and smile and it reminds me of why I'm working so hard to change things. In Manhattan, Shannon Ferry, New York One.